This was the most awkward time Hulk appeared. It was also when he got beaten the most miserably. Hulk was seen completely helpless against Thanos' combo punches after a fancy series of moves. He was directly beaten unconscious. After the destruction of Asgard, Thor led everyone on the way to Earth, but was unfortunately attacked by Thanos. Thanos threatened Loki with Thor's life to hand over the Space Stone. At this point, Heimel used his last bit of strength to summon the Rainbow Bridge and sent Hulk back to Earth. While he was stabbed to death by Thanos on the spot, Loki pretended to submit to Thanos, but had long readied a surprise attack with one blade. Unexpectedly, this little trick was easily seen through by Thanos. The next moment he single-handedly lifted Loki and strangled him to death. It could be seen he had already obtained two stones. With the six stones gathered, just a snap of his fingers could destroy half the lives in the universe. Then he sent people to Earth to seize Doctor Strange's Time Stone and Vision's Mind Stone while he went to nowhere himself to seize the Reality Stone from the Collector. Having landed back on Earth, Banner found Doctor Strange at the Sanctum. After alerting the severity of the situation, Doctor Strange and Banner found Tony, who was on his honeymoon. Tony said that as long as the stones were destroyed, so Thanos could not gather all six. Would this not solve all the problems? But as the original guardian, Doctor Strange, absolutely would not allow him to do so. So they debated. Banner thought the priority was to quickly find Vision and protect him. The only one who could find Vision now was Captain America. But Banner, who had left Earth for tears, did not know Tony and Cap had completely fallen out. Banner hurriedly advised now was not the time to dwell on personal grudges. After much inner struggle, Tony reluctantly took out the flip phone Cap had left him, but just as he was about to make the call, the city suddenly fell into chaos. When everyone went out to check, a huge Michelin spaceship was parked in the sky. On the other side, Peter in the school bus also sensed danger through his spider sense. He asked his friend Ned to help attract the other students' attention. While he quickly donned his suit and rushed to the spaceship, the ones who came down from the spaceship were Thanos minions, Ebony Ma and Cull Obsidian. To avoid harming innocent civilians, Doctor Strange turned the area into the mirror dimension. Then Tony asked Banner to call out Hulk to help. Whether Hulk was scared or just hated Earth, no matter how hard Banner tried, Hulk still would not budge. Does anyone know why this is? Seeing this, Tony had to take the stage himself. He lightly tapped his chest, and a nanotech suit quickly spread to all parts of his body, facing Calypsidian's attack. Tony easily blocked with one hand then counterattacked with a punch, followed by four arc reactors emerging from his back, blasting Call Obsidian away with a laser cannon this stun banner. But before Tony could feel cool for three seconds, he was sent flying by Call Obsidian. At this time Banner was still trying to wake Hulk up, but the result could be imagined. And when Tony was fighting Call Obsidian, he was unfortunately knocked down. Luckily Spider-Man arrived just in time to block the attack. But even together, they still did not have any advantage. Seeing Tony was about to be done for trapped by Cull Obsidian, Wong promptly opened a portal and sent him to the North Pole. But Doctor Strange on the other side was not so lucky. Doctor Strange was easily beaten by Ebony Ma, but it was not so easy to take the stone barehanded. Left with no choice, Ebony Ma had to take Doctor Strange away. At this point, Spider-Man shot out his web to catch Doctor Strange, but ended up being brought onto the spaceship as well. On the other side, Banner picked up Tony's phone that dropped to the ground and successfully called Cap. Spider-Man Peter Parker flew higher and higher outside the spaceship. Soon he lost consciousness due to lack of oxygen. Luckily, Tony promptly summoned the newest spider suit. Mr. Stark, it smells like a new car in here. Then the two successfully sneaked onto the ship. At this time, Doctor Strange was being controlled by Ebony Ma, with countless needles forcing him to hand over the Time Stone, unbeknownst to them. Tony and Spider-Man were watching everything from behind. At this point, Spider-Man had a bright idea. Tony fired a missile blasting a hole in the ship. Ebony Mai and Doctor Strange were both sucked out. At the critical moment, Spider-Man shot out his web to catch Doctor Strange and unlocked a new feature of the suit automatically. The eight spider legs saved Doctor Strange. Then Tony quickly used nanites to seal the hole. Ebony Mai thus died in outer space. Then Tony suggested taking the initiative to attack Vano's home planet Titan to catch him off guard and kill him by surprise. The three readily agreed and Tony officially announced Spider-Man would from then on become a member of the Avengers. At the same time, the Guardians of the Galaxy received a distress signal from Thor's ship. 
When they arrived after the space jump, everyone was completely shocked by the scene before them. Countless corpses and wreckage were floating in space. Just then Thor bumped into the windshield rocket raccoon's first reaction was that they'd met a scammer. Seeing Thor was still alive, they hurriedly carried him onto the ship. Mantis sensed through psychic empathy that Thor was very angry and sad. To clarify the situation, he awakened Thor with his mind. Through Thor's explanation, they learned of Thanos' evil plan. So they decided to split into two groups. Thor, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot went to Nidaveller to find the Dwarf King. To forge a new weapon for Thor while Star-Lord and the others went to nowhere. To stop Thanos from getting the Reality Stone. But when they arrived it was already too late. Thanos had already found the Collector first. Facing Thanos' torture. The Collector did not reveal the stone's location. At this point Drax, ignoring Star-Lord's dissuasion, insisted on avenging his wife and daughter. Luckily Mantis used her psychic powers to forcibly put Drax to sleep. Sensing something wrong, Thanos was about to go over to check. Gamora unhesitatingly rushed forward and stabbed at Thanos' throat, then stabbed through his heart from behind. With her own hands she killed her adoptive father. Unable to restrain her grief, she broke down crying. However, things were not so simple. Thanos' voice rang out again. It turned out Thanos had already obtained the reality stone. Everything earlier was an illusion he created with the stone. Star-Lord's weapons were like children's toys before Thanos. He could only watch as Thanos took Gamora away. Then Gamora saw her sister Nebula. By now Nebula had been tortured by Thanos. Beyond recognition Thanos tortured Nebula. Threatening Gamora to reveal the Soul Stone's location, unable to bear her sister's torment. Gamora reluctantly told him its location, then the two went to Vormir. And the Guardian of the Soul Stone. Turned out to be the WWI villain Red Skull he told Thanos that to get the Soul Stone. He had to sacrifice his most beloved, Gamora unabashedly laughed immediately. Because Thanos had always regarded lives as beneath notice. Destroying humankind was his ultimate goal. How could he possibly have someone he loved? Unexpectedly. Thanos' eyes brimmed with tears it turned out. He had always regarded Gamora as his own daughter then tearfully. He threw Gamora down. When he awoke again the soul stone was already in his hand. By now Thanos had four infinity stones and his next target was the Mind Stone on Vision's head. On the way to Nidaveller, Rocket Raccoon gave Thor a prosthetic eyeball. Without a second thought Thor took off his eye patch and stuffed the eyeball in. But Rocket Raccoon said, The only way I can sneak it off is by tearing your pants down. Soon, they arrived at the known Galactic Armory. Asgard almost all weapons came from here. But Nidaveller was now dilapidated. Suddenly, the Dwarf King appeared and knocked them down without asking questions. Only after recognizing Thor did he let down his guard. Not long ago, Thanos had threatened the Dwarf King to help him forge the Infinity Gauntlet. The Dwarf King thought that as long as he obeyed, the people on this planet would be spared. Who knew after getting the Gauntlet, Thanos not only killed everyone, but also destroyed the Dwarf King's hands. Later persuaded by Thor, the Dwarf King decided to help him forge a super weapon, Stormbreaker. Rocket Raccoon worked with Thor, utilizing the ship's power to restart the frozen core and activate the Neutron Star. But due to long-term disrepair, the machinery malfunctioned again, left with no choice to defeat Thanos and avenge Asgard's people. Thor bravely went to the core, planning to pry it open with his bare hands, with a burst of energy shooting through Thor's body into the furnace. The Dwarf King hurriedly forged the axe. A few minutes later, Stormbreaker took shape. But the Dwarf King couldn't find a handle for the moment and Thor had already been burned all over. Then heavily smashed onto the ground. Seeing this, Groot directly offered his arm connecting the two ends of the axe. With one swing he added a handle to the axe. That's Thor's second divine weapon. Stormbreaker came into being on Earth, Vision and Wanda were on a date. Suddenly a spear pierced Vision's body. It turned out to be Thanos minions Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight. Their target was the Mind Stone on Vision's head. Wanda quickly got up and used her powers to drive back the two. But before she could heal Vision's wound, Corvus Glaive charged out again. A melee broke out at random. Wanda vs. Proxima, Vision vs. Corvus Glaive. But soon the injured Vision was at a disadvantage. Seeing the stone about to be taken, Wanda quickly shook off Proxima then rushed over to help Vision. By now Vision had completely lost his combat ability, just as Wanda was about to take on both. A speeding train passed behind her. Then a familiar figure appeared before them. Proxima threw out her spear and was easily caught by Cap. Falcon and Black Widow also joined the fight one after another. With Widow's arrival, the tides instantly turned. 
Proxima saw things going badly, and immediately retreated with Corvus Glive. Then they came to the Avengers' compound. Not only did they see Rhodey, who had been dismissed by the Secretary of State, but also Benner, Black Widow's love interest. After some discussion, Vision suggested destroying the Mind Stone in his head, sacrificing himself to save half the lives in the universe. Although the only one who could destroy the stone was Wanda, she obviously would not agree. At this point Banner said, Why not just take out the stone and destroy it? Cap immediately realized a place with extremely advanced medical equipment, so Cap led everyone to Wakanda. Deciding to seek help from Black Panther, here. Cap also saw his century-old frozen friend Bucky although young, Black Panther's sister's skills far surpassed those of Banner. She told them removing the stone was no problem. But the neural network inside the stone was intricate, requiring some time. Just then, countless alien spacecrafts landed on the outskirts of Wakanda. It was Thanos' minions who had caught up to buy Shuri enough time. Black Panther activated Wakanda's full defense. Cap had one to stay to protect Vision, while the others fully armed themselves for battle. This should be the most brutal fight for the Avengers. To confront Thanos, Banner even wore the Hulkbuster armor but fell flat on his face in the next second. As the king, Black Panther, also led the warriors in an unbelievable chant. At Proxima Midnight's command, tens of thousands of alien creatures swarmed forth, desperately charging at the Wakandan barrier although the shield was extremely strong. Some still managed to break through it. Immediately after, everyone began shooting wildly ahead Rhodey flew into the air and fired a volley of missiles around the barrier. If Agent Everett Ross were here, his lasso arrows would surely be godlike. They then noticed some creatures trying to go around the back of the barrier. If the rear defense was breached, Vision's side would be in grave danger. Black Panther immediately ordered the front barrier open and an epic battle kicked off. Cap and Black Panther led the charge, jumping in and crazily outputting on the alien creatures. It was absolutely the most exciting scene ever. Rhodey flew into the air and began indiscriminate firing. But due to the sheer number of enemies, the Wakandan warriors fought primitive melees with their advanced weapons. Soon everyone's strength gradually declined and was pinned under the creatures just then a loud boom came from the sky. With a beam of light descending through wielding Stormbreaker arrived at the battlefield with Rocket, Raccoon and Groot. You guys are so screwed now, bring me Thanos. With one move defeating darkness with thunder, able to withstand tens of thousands of troops. With their arrival the situation instantly reversed facing the endless attacking creatures. Bucky picked up Rocket Raccoon for spinning AoE. After clearing a wave of mobs, Rocket Raccoon actually eyed Bucky's metal arm. Thor also introduced his new friends to Cap. While on the other side Tony had successfully arrived at Thanos' home planet Titan. An epic battle with Thanos was about to begin. Tony and Spider-Man together controlled the ship. Arriving at Thanos' home planet Titan before they even got their footing, a bomb was delivered right to them. It turned out Star-Lord and the others were already lying in ambush. The two sides started fighting indiscriminately without asking questions. Spider-Man was scared by Mantis into continuous dodging and tumbling. Tony was attached to the wall by Star-Lord's control device. Breaking free of the restraints, Tony immediately controlled Drax. Then Star-Lord quickly grabbed Spider-Man. Where is Gamora? Yeah, I'll do you one better. Who is Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? After half an hour of seamless communication, everyone finally figured out their relationship. Turned out they both opposed Thanos. So the enemy's enemy is a friend. Then they gathered together and started developing countermeasures. While Doctor Strange on the side directly traveled to a parallel world using the Time Stone and snuck a peek at Avengers and Gam, he told Tony. He saw over 14 million outcomes battling Thanos. Soon, Thanos with four stones arrived on Titan. When he saw Doctor Strange, he already knew Ebony Ma had kicked the bucket at this point, Tony controlled the ship diving down from the sky. Smashing straight at Thanos, Thanos used the stone's power to break free instantly, then attacked everyone. Even joined forces, they still were not Thanos' match. At this point, Star-Lord stepped on Doctor Strange's magic circles and attached a time bomb behind Thanos. Doctor Strange quickly had the cloak bind Thanos' gauntlet. Then Spider-Man worked with Doctor Strange's portals. With agile footwork, cut Thanos off guard. Unexpectedly, he was grabbed by the neck with one hand by Thanos and thrown hundreds of meters away. Tony fired at Thanos crazily midair, but all the damage was easily absorbed by the gauntlet. Then he returned it with a counterattack. Just then a ship smashed down from the sky towards Thanos. 
It was Star-Lord who had come to avenge Doctor Strange took the chance to tie up the gauntlet with his whip. Drax slide tackled, working with Star-Lord's gravity to hold down Thanos' right hand. Seeing this, Tony and Spider-Man quickly grabbed Thanos' hands controlling Thanos. Doctor Strange released Mantis. To put Thanos to sleep with psychic empathy, Tony and Spider-Man rushed up trying to take off the gauntlet. Star-Lord came asking about Gamora. But upon learning of Gamora's cruel murder by Thanos, Star-Lord furiously threw a punch and created that famous scene from Avengers and Game. Just as they were about to take off the gauntlet, Thanos suddenly woke up. Truly, fear not the godlike opponent. Fear the piggish ally. Breaking free of everyone's restraint, Thanos unleashed the stone's power, destroying a planet. Then controlled the falling meteorites to launch fierce attacks at them. Spider-Man hurriedly moved the unconscious ones to safety at this point Doctor Strange stepped forward, deciding to engage in a magical duel with Thanos. But unexpectedly all of Doctor Strange's moves were diffused by Thanos. Even the released clones and countless mystic ropes were to no avail. At the critical moment of imminent peril Tony timely lent a hand, using Nenets to block the Infinity Gauntlet. And the next moment was the decisive battle between Tony and Thanos. Tony took the initiative to attack, flexibly switching weapon forms. Even with parts of his armor destroyed by Thanos, the nanotech could instantly repair itself. Tony single-handedly created a shield to block Thanos' magical attacks, then turned and kicked Thanos to the ground, followed by a series of combo.